Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I had a great bit planned, and I don't remember what it was, so joining me this week is the one and only Ian Gibson. Folks, I have great news. I have house insurance again. (gasps) Uh, I didn't have it for about a week there. I didn't tell Maggie. I didn't turn my 3D printer on in case it burned the house down, but my house is insured again. Thank goodness for paperwork mistakes being fixed. Yay. Jake, do you have house insurance? No, I did just get the renewal notice on my renter's insurance, though. Nice. Mm, That's good. Nice. I don't hear the music. Has music been playing? Uh, No, I was just going to make fun of Will at some point. (laughs) How do you not hear the music? I don't hear it, William. Look, I'm saying it on stream because it needs to happen. We're moving this podcast to VMix. Absolutely not. Audio issues. I don't because have he, audio issues. Constant audio issues. It's an, I have zero. Okay, so about five minutes before the stream, Windows decided to undo everything in OBS again. So I had to don't put that back up. Bill Gates. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know why you can't hear it. You should be able to. I've I set can't. everything correctly. I have set phasers to stun. It, uh, it doesn't problem. matter. We'll we'll sing along with it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Jake, tell us about all the video games you've been playing. I've been playing so many video games because my wife was out of town last week. So it's just video game central because we Ooh. only have the one TV. Um, <gasps> so that's why my list is so long. And I'm going to shotgun through a couple of them because I will have longer thoughts in upcoming spotlight videos on a couple of these. Um, but I played Dead Space. I played Dead Space 2. I rolled credits on Unpacking. I rolled yeah. credits on Halo 3 ODST. I Never rolled played credits it. on Halo Reach, which I have Good played game. before, but I played through it again. And then... Nope, oh. nope, nope. Will, whatever you did, fuck off. Can I keep talking? Am okay, I echoing? Yeah, I, Can I you think, hear me? I think, I think you're good now. Okay. Um, I played a, a game called Mind Scanners because it was on Game Pass. I played it for like 10 minutes. And then I is, uninstalled it because you didn't like it or it's too good for you. Cause I'm looking at pictures and the pictures were what got me. It's let, let's say a papers, please like kind of oh, where you're like, no. uh, you're, it's got a, you're going and you're interviewing people who have brain maladies and you're trying to get rid of their insanity or whatever. <laughs> and it was, the interface was just a little too obtuse. I didn't, it didn't click with me fast enough. And because it was on game pass and it was free, I'm like, I'm not going to bother sticking with this. Sorry. I just, I think it's pronounced miladies, miladies, mind miladies. <laughs> um, Excuse me. Mind miladies. Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad you said that because, because that saves me from um, an install and a play. Yeah. Jake's yeah. dead. Oh, he's back. I'm here. Jake's not dead okay. anymore. But look, I you you did the full shotgun approach, so tell me which one of these you want to deep dive on or medium dive on. Um, I'm going to be talking about the dead spaces in an upcoming spotlight video, so I'm going to talk about Halo Excuse 3 me. ODST, yes? Dead Spachetchi. Yes. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> um, and I still haven't played 3 because uh, theoretically William and I are going to play it sometime. I would do that. Co-op. I would definitely do that. Extra, extra life, middle of the night extra life. Sorry, I, I, I figured totally out. Save it for that. Uh, I figured out the audio issues. Discord had reset back to default. Um, I didn't check there, so I apologize to the entire audience. But are we okay in terms of recording an episode so far, or do we? Yeah, everything's start? fine. It swapped. <laughs> uh, it swapped your audio track to the desktop audio track, but that should be fine. I'll be able to fix that. That's fine. Again, we should really try VMix because it's an all-in-one solution. At least give it a shot. But anyways, I've used it. Um, so you're not going to talk about Dead Space because you've got some upcoming videos on that upcoming with a I'll large just be asterisk. Here. We'll be here the whole hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unpacking. Did you like unpacking? Yes. I it was um, it was so game. yeah, so charming and delightful. But like in the back of my head, I think I've been conditioned for kind of these artsy indie games to have like a now you're going to feel something. And so I kept like 
all the time oh, okay. uh, unpacking like the art supplies and stuff. And I was totally expecting that it's when I'd get to a new space, I'd be unpacking the boxes and then I'd realize I hadn't unpacked any of my art stuff. Cause I had like given it away or something. Um, but no, it never did that. It but come was on. charming. Come on. The sexuality twist, the baby. Come on. Yeah. It was uh, all of these heartwarming moments. Yeah. Of, I, I um, played that extra life last year. That was my, mm-hmm. I'm going to wake up at, it was either like four or six a.m. Yeah, it was right before wake me, so I caught the tail end of it. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna wake up and I need a game to just dive into, and so having that and like a little cup of coffee was just like chef's kiss, just playing right through that. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. I think I I had put in the Discord that it let me live my vicarious fantasy of being a published author and someone who owns Shin Godzilla on Blu-ray. <laughs> um, I'm I'm half of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah charming delightful uh at times stressful just because i was like oh where do i put all this stuff like when you get to the it's like the house yeah. but then it's like 10 rooms and you're like Ugh, yeah so yeah. much but um yeah i loved unpacking it was a very nice um and did you want to say anything about the dos halos boys oh yeah so i had played reach and i was just playing that back through after i downloaded a master chief collection because um i liked it a lot but then i played odst because i know will likes it a lot and kyle likes it a lot um and i was like i should play that one because i that was the one i was least familiar with um mm-hmm. and it was definitely interesting uh, kind of you know playing with the format of a halo game doing these kind of um like flashback missions as you're the one guy going around and finding bits and pieces that your team has left behind and then you play through the thing that led them to that moment Uh, Mm -hmm. and then it culminates at the end with everybody you know getting the band back together um i think i i preferred the the user interface in reach but yeah i mean i mean i can say it's subtly different uh, ODST, I think, I think is my favorite just because it departs so like much from the storytelling of like it's not some giant, you know, space opera thing. It's more not like a big a, action movie. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, location hopping action movie. Yeah, and you're like exploring areas that Master Chief was at, but Master Chief like bullished his way through them. Plowed so you get to, through. Like, yeah, plowed through them. So you get to like see stuff on a different level, which is cool. And like from the perspective of the UNSC soldier, even though you're still like a higher tier of it. Um, also, the music's banging. The music was great. I think that also being kind of a big departure from kind of the the more tra- traditional like big orchestra moments where then it's kind of this pared down like minimalist. There's a sax to phone solos at various points. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I love the brute spiker. I think that's my favorite weapon in Halo. Oh, it's really good. Spiker is. It's good. like it's like slightly better than the needle. The needler has so much promise to it, and I love picking it up, but it never fully satisfies using it. Until you get to, if you can, once the it's best obviously when you get enough needles into the person that it ex, they explode. But the yeah. spiker is great because you can just <laughs> launch a bunch of spikes into them and whack them over the head. Yeah. The um the mauler was good. I don't know if it's in ODST, but it was in three. And then um the ma- wait is the mauler with the big sweet swept blade? No, that's the brute launcher? shot. The mauler that's is like the the, the the mauler is like the shotgun brute gun. It's like a you hold it. Oh, in one that hand. is in ODST. Yeah. Um, they have something like it in Halo Infinite, and that and it, but it was like a one shot slug, uh, and that I use most of Halo Infinite. When I didn't have the tank gun, um, man, I feel like it may be time for me to finally play Halo Three ODST because I I actually went back to Halo Infinite a couple weeks ago, and I played it for about thirty forty five minutes to like scratch the Halo itch, but I'm still not crazy about Infinite. But at the same time, there's too many damn games I need to play right now, so I think <laughs> ODST's gonna be on the shelf for at least a couple couple more months. Dang, I I had to record for work some stuff in the first level of Halo. Uh, and then I played like 45 more minutes of the first level of Halo and I was like, so good. this is great. Uh, but can I, I can I say work. something 
I feel like all Halo games have a problem where the first 20 to 30 percent is like incredible. And then typically the last 10 to 20 percent is really good. But then the middle section is where it just like collapses a little bit. So it feels like every Halo game, the middle is a bit of a slog through it with occasional good points in it, but mostly a slog. And I feel like they have just never really granted. I never finished five and I didn't finish infinite and I haven't played ODST, but it feels like a majority of them have that problem. We'll say yeah, ODST. I, I was surprised at how short it was. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty condensed. And so I didn't necessarily <laughs> ever feel like there was a lull. Um, Can but, you do um, ODST in any order? I don't think so. No, I think they like, definitely they yeah. definitely they guide you through the city to the yeah. story. So you can't do like like TDSO. I I was thinking you could go to any of the missions, but I think you're yeah you're right. They do I don't lead think you so. I, they were definitely because the right at the very beginning, trying to figure out the top down map with how the city was actually laid out because there was like a lot of verticality that doesn't necessarily translate to the map. I got lost a couple of times being like i feel like i should be able to go through this door or go through this gate but i couldn't but then i could go through it later yeah um, but. yeah i man you're making me want to replay it i haven't i haven't played through halo 3 and odsc in a while so i should do that that's good i'm excited to hear your that's thoughts on dead space I, I i'm looking forward I to have that so many of them ian's freaking I... out for some reason <sighs> Remind me when we get to the news segment. I have some breaking news that I think could be a very fun segment. Okay. Okay. Ian, when we get to the news segment, Hi. you have a really yeah. fun idea. That's going to be just one. I do. Oh, Jake, if you could remember that Thank to you. remind that in the chat. I'm doing it. No I'm one else can it. see that. Folks, um, <clears throat> I have been playing video games this week. I have been playing The Legend of the Zelda Majora's Mask. Um, Mayhoras. Mayhoras Mask. Um, I, um, I had played, I talked about this last week. I played Ocarina of Time while we were watching TV. Majora's Mask, I've been doing that less so, mostly because Majora's Mask, you got to pay attention to. Um, and I am not less remembering it, but like, it's not like, oh, here's a dungeon, go through the dungeon. It's more like I'm in the part where it's like, let's remember the different areas to go to and everything. So I have been, I streamed that last weekend. I might stream again this weekend. Uh, I've just been playing that like as an actual video game, if that makes sense, rather than on the side. Um, so I'm on the lookout for like something to play on my Switch while I'm on the couch, and I don't quite know what that's going to be yet. Islanders. Um, I see. I own that on Steam, so when my Steam Deck comes, I can play that on the couch. Um, I'm approaching 700 hours. I. Are you playing those hours, or are you letting it sit? I'm playing them. I'm just asking. Just asking. Man, I I really it's wish while I had we're a watching long... Bones. <laughs> bones. I wish I wish I had a long term cozy game like that. My cozy games don't last that long. No, I, mine. Yeah, I not even. Yeah, I don't think they last it's, that long. For a long time, it was Animal Crossing, but this is a lot less taxing on my brain than Animal Crossing. I can really just kind of unplug and let the city build itself. I would say Pit Cross is my like cozy game long term. Yeah. I play a lot of Pit Cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and then <laughs> other than Majora's Mask, man, I haven't coughed for like four days, and now I'm coughing. Oh, it's because of COVID. Did you get COVID? No, I just it's it was finally over with, and I didn't have to explain to people I wasn't sick anymore, and now I'm coughing. Anyways, uh, Fallout New Vegas, uh, incredible, incredible game. I apparently on Steam. What do you want from me? Fantastic. Yeah. No, I'm just making an, a okay. gesture of agreement. You, you Are you about to angry. say for the third time that apparently I have played this game completely before but have forgotten about it? No, I wasn't going to. I was going to say, apparently I have always said that Fallout 3, uh, while my favorite Fallout game is also the best Fallout game, but playing more of this has made me realize I think Fallout 3 will still remain my favorite Fallout game because it's the one I played the most and when I had a 360 and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hate you so much. No, I'm just I'm look. If I get set in front of you, I think this is the first step to you realizing that Bethesda Game Studios is not actually that great of a developer. I don't think they're that great of a developer. I just really like their video games. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. 
Um, it's like Elix. I like Elix. They're not a great developer. <laughs> um, By the way, did you play Elix too? <laughs> no, I, I'm waiting for it to go on sale because I'm not paying full price for that video game. I think it did it go on sale the other day for like ten bucks or something. I during my Steam haul, I, I don't think it was super cheap. Um, so, anyways, Fallout New Vegas. I, it has great writing. There's so much stuff I'm discovering. Uh, that it's like, I'm like in this whole different portion of the map because I just didn't go to New Vegas. So I'm in this whole other portion of the map doing all of these missions. And it, it was the first time that, and you'll be happy about this, Ian. In in Skyrim, you walk around, people are like, oh, you're the Dragonborn. Oh my goodness, this is a Dragonborn. Breathe on me. Oh, breathe on my toes, daddy. And you're like the oh. Dragonborn. And everyone's fucking blowing their loads and on you. Fallout Three. Everybody's like, "You're d- you're Liam Neeson's son." <laughs> oh. uh, you're still a baby because you glitched out of the vault. Um, so I I went and like helped some NCR people, and then was doing stuff with that. And I haven't progressed the main quest at all. And I'm going to other NCR camps, and they're like, "Oh, it's and you." Night chemical romance. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And they're like, you oh, say, it's you say nigh chemical romance. Yes. <laughs> Those are the worst That's a good cover band name. Joke. Um, so it's just interesting. They're like, oh, it's you. Hey, thanks for doing this. Thanks for doing that. You're really famous within. And it's it's like the fame that these people are giving me is not tied to anything in the main quest. Because yes. I'm not doing anything in the main it. quest. It's because I earned reputation. it by helping these fucking people yes. out. And it just feels yes. really good to like get that recognition. Um so yeah, I'm having a blast with it. I literally like finish work at five, go and sit on the couch and play for like three hours. And Karen gets mad at me and Hell it's yeah. like, can we watch something? I'm like, fine. Absolutely. Um, not. Yeah, it's still, I was going through a vault today and I had a couple jump scares because feral ghouls are terrifying. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I There is a, there's a couple overhaul, like completely new games that I was checking out on PC, not the one that had the like convicted, I don't know, someone sex abuse person in it. There's two other ones that are out there that are pretty good uh, on the PC side. So I might might check those out once I finish the, the base game again. But I do have all the DLCs now, which I have never played. So that'd be interesting to check out. Uh, and I need, to, I need, so anyone in chat or in comments, I need a new cozy game to play on my Switch. Thought about Banjo Kazooie. Islanders, you idiot. We just yeah. talked about it. I own it already on Steam. You and know if it's you good. buy it on Switch, I haven't the played it. Developers will get more of your money. How do I know it's good? Make a new game. Jake could be spending seven hundred hours in the worst video game possible. People do that with Dota and League of Legends. Don't say it's not possible. So maybe by comparison, I only ever spent like two hundred hours in No Man's Sky. So yeah, and that's a terrible game. Okay, I'm done talking. Ian, what have you been playing? Hi, um, I've been playing some more Pokemon White. Um, I just wanted to touch on this because, folks, I think I may be like good at Pokemon now because I beat Pokemon White, and I sat down and I did like Victory Road. I did the trainer battle before the elite four. I did all of the elite four and I did the first of two final fights in like one sitting. And it was, I don't want to say it was easy, but I, it was not that challenging to me. And I don't think that's because the game is easy. It's because I think I've gotten better at Pokemon. And then even the final fight, uh, the first time I did it, I got wiped and then I just had to do like 45 minutes of grinding and then a little bit of thinking to realize the better pairing against this guy. And then I beat him. So I, I beat Pokemon White. Fantastic game. But I think I may be getting better at Pokemon. You guys ever had that experience where you play a series and you realize multiple iterations into the series that you're like, I'm actually getting better at this type of game? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I want to I say like, like every every week I have some sort of question to open up conversation and you assholes are like, maybe. No, I know I'm, that I've definitely had that feeling, but I can't like nothing's jumping to the front of my brain. I want something to, but it's just not happening. I know that what you've said is true. Yeah, I think Wills is Picross. Like, because you probably the first one you were like, eh, but now you're probably tearing through Picross games because you got all sorts of Picross strats in your head, right? Mm. fuck off let's talk about war thunder <laughs> i was gonna say rim world uh, 
Yeah, actually, that's fair. That's fair. Multiple runs. Um, I've been playing War Thunder, and uh, I think I'm done with War Thunder. Look, no! here's the thing. I, I wasn't going to talk I about War Thunder. I bought you your gift I had, already. But I had such a fantastic stream this weekend where basically I played War Thunder for three and a half hours on stream. Uh, and shout out to Furious Femboy, first time watcher who hopped in the chat and was like, hey, uh, we're, I play War Thunder and he was just giving me tips and all this information, you know, like don't climb, don't make your climb rate higher than 20 degrees at the start of the mission. And I was like, cool, exactly the information I needed. Um, and so it was a lot of fun. And I actually, I, I got to a point in that game, like during the stream where I was like, I'm having so much fun with this game and I know I'm going to keep having fun. And I know I have to put money into this game to have more fun that I am prepared to spend money on this game right now. And so I was talking with Furious Femboy and I was like, how do I spend this money? And I was like, do I get do I get the the battle pass? And he was like, absolutely not. It's not worth it. And then I was like, do I like buy these other things? And he's like, no, not worth it at all. And I was like, well, what's <laughs> worth it? And he goes, well, the, pr the premium planes are good. And the premium planes are literally like higher tier planes. Well, not necessarily higher tier planes, but every tier of planes has like two or three that you literally have to pay money to get that plane. You can't get it any other way. And um, that I think they're relatively balanced in the idea that like, you know, some of them are glass cannons or like it's really powerful, but it's slow, um, but they're unique. And when you're yeah. playing with the premium plane, it unlocks other planes a little bit faster. So it also gives you kind of a little bit of a long-term grinding benefit. And I was like, you know, I'm playing UK planes. I'm not going to any other tech tree because I'd have to basically start over. And I was like, which one should I buy? And he's like, oh, let me do some research. And then he came back and he's like, well, there's really only two that are worth it. And I was like, okay, how much are they? And he's like, they're $50. And I was like, Whoa. I'm not buying that. And, and this whole anecdote is about how I reached a point where I was having so much fun playing that game, despite all the BS microtransaction and obfuscation around it, yeah. that I was ready to give them more money, but their stupid monetization and like, like oddly worded different ways you can pay and not really being clear about what gives you what or what it actually does – basically discouraged me from giving them more money, even though I was literally prepared to immediately spend more money yeah. on that game. And it's just like, it's just a shame. And I, I've been playing some more of it as well, but the problem I'm having now that I had this morning was I got into this match. I got my ass handed to me. And then that happened like three more matches in a row. And I was like, I was like, what's, what's different? Why am I getting my ass handed to me? And I realized what happened was I unlocked a new plane last night. That is in tier three. And before I'd only uh, been playing tier one and two planes. Yeah. So me putting a higher tier plane in my in my roster put me in higher tier matches, which means other people have better planes. And also, if they have better planes, they've probably been playing the game longer as well compared to who I'm usually played against. So basically, because I got into because I, I reached a point in the game where I'm starting to get matchmaked into more difficult matches and that's taking the fun out of it. Yeah. So I'm just, I was just kind of like, okay, I've had my fun. I, I had a lot of fun with, with, with the premium. You know, I, I still think if you're into that kind of stuff, you know, world war two multiplayer plane flying, this is probably the best one out there unless you're trying to get super realistic with it. Um, but just be aware of all that monetization and literally the only reason to spend money is, is on premium. If you're going to be playing that game, Go ahead and buy premium. They do a nice job of being like, you could buy like five, 10, 20, 30, 90 day increments. So like, I, I literally was like, I'm probably gonna play this game for 10 days, a week and a half or so. Yeah. And so I'm going to buy the I'm going to buy the 20 day version just to cover that. And, um, that hundred percent makes it worth it. Cause that makes the grind less annoying. But other than that, don't spend any money on the game. So it's like, I don't know, man, let me ask another question that nobody's going to have an answer to. You guys ever have a game that you love, but that just eventually pushes you away so much that you can't go back to it like destiny and destiny Two. Uh, I wouldn't use those as examples, <laughs> but, um, Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, well, but while we think on that question, I, I did want to say it, it's surprising. They don't have like a, Hey, you're into war thunder and you want to start spending money with us. Here's the like optimal path. Like, oh, here's yeah. your starter kit. Here's your whatever. No. Like, 
I, I'm surprised none of that is there because I feel like other games do that pretty well where it's like they give you a pack where it gives you enough of like each currency to like test things yeah. out. But th this is literally just like this is the worst monetization I've seen in a video game other than mobile games mm -hmm. because it's they throw it in your face all the time. But like I don't want to count it out because I can't. But literally like the amount of like unlock and upgrade paths that you then can also pay money for to boost and the amount of items that you can do like, oh, you have decals, which you can unlock, but you can also pay for it. You've got camouflage. You've got your research. You've got your crew. You've got your planes. You've got like it, it just becomes so confusing that you look at it and you're just like, that's a money currency. That's a money currency. That's a time waster currency just all over the screen. And it becomes it's like one thing to monetize your game, but it's another to monetize it so heavily that it becomes horribly confusing and it's just it's a shame the gameplay is um, great gameplay is great i do have a game in mind re yeah. your former question but then i also have a query about war thunder uh -huh. um, which uh -huh. i will get to first you said you were uh focused on uk planes which is why you were flying a spitfire correct yeah because basically the way it works is there are multiple countries and then each country has like a tech tree for tanks planes uh -huh. and ships and some of them have helicopters uh -huh. but the problem is as far as i could tell your research currency doesn't really transfer well between the trees and between vehicles so you basically go i'm gonna play tanks and it's like okay pick your country and you're gonna grind in that because if you try and go anywhere else or any other vehicle type you got to start over so i sure, I, yeah. I think when i logged in i noticed that i had flown planes a couple times before and I was like, OK, I'll go down that. So just saying, it's not my love of the game that's making me do that. It's the game literally shoehorning me into making a decision I don't want to make. Sure. So in the you were in like a, the bomber group mode when I jumped in on the yeah. stream. Um, were those because then I had a question about the kinds of bombers you were interacting with. Were those all British planes or because I noticed there was one that just said Avenger, but I didn't know if it was the Grumman TPF S Avenger. Or it if probably it was, was. Some UK event. It Avenger. probably was. Because I, I play the air arcade battle, which is where they're just like, we're not trying to be realistic, both in right. controls and settings. So well, you can come in with whatever, whatever type of Because the Grumman Avenger is a three seat carrier based torpedo bomber. And yes. I did not see an aircraft wow. carrier on that giant landmass there, upon there which are, you're flying. There are aircraft carriers, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But where so were they coming from? You were so far yeah. inland. I know, I know, but it's 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 just a shame because that game is ruined by their approach to monetization and and literally UX, like how the user is experiencing and navigating that game. When the core gameplay, whether it's naval or tank or plane based, is fantastic. So I will um, say on on that note, dovetailing back to your question, I think that for me would be Grand Theft Auto Online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which was like yep. fun for a while and then it overcomplicated. I mean, the user interface for GTA Online was never good. Yeah, um, trying to get awful. it to do anything was just a nightmare. Um, but then adding all this stuff that like really, if unless you were grinding 100 hours a week, you'd never be able to afford any of like the fancy mm -hmm. stuff to do the fancy mission unless you shelled out real money. Um and then people would use that to get, you know, the big space lasers and cars yeah. that can shoot you from 17 miles away. That just I, um, a nightmare to, to play. This is going to sound like a jab, but I swear it's not. It That Grand Theft Auto Online and No Man's Sky have the exact same problem, which is they keep adding content to the game, but it's horizontal content. They're like, we're going to add more cars. We're going to add alien ships. But they never they never never got down to fixing the core user experience or core user flow through that sure. game and progression, et cetera. So like you said, like, like the interface with missions and doing stuff in GTA online sucks, how it, how players interact sucks. It all sucks, but they're adding all these new cars and all these new missions and stuff. And it's like, no, that's not the problem. Still adding new cars and missions. It's frustrating. Um, anyways, let me do a quick hit on this last one. I finally started playing Armored Core 4 Answer, <gasps> the game that I bought a PlayStation 3 for because of uh, Chris Fisher. Is his last name Fisher? No. Is it? No. Is it is because it's Fisher? No, Fisher King is... Is this Zach? <laughs> oh, or is no. that him? He's so confusing. His, it's one his, of those, like, one of his usernames has the word Fisher in it, I will say. I can't That's keep why track of who's on the Discord. 
Okay, okay, that's why I get confused. It's one of those black holes where I I never know the right answer, you know? One of those like little mind pockets where you're like, wait, is it this It's like me back? with Jason's name. I kept wanting to yeah. call him Jacob. But anyways, Chris from Save Data recommended this game um, as the one armored core to play. Um, and I started it up. I only played about 30 minutes of it. Um, it's pretty good so far. The problem, though, is that like the default control scheme is wonky. So I need to go in and redo the control scheme, which apparently you can customize pretty much every button in the game. So I, I need to put some time into that. I'll just give you an example. Like there's a there's a right arm weapon and a left arm weapon. And by default, it is the cross and the square on the PlayStation controller, which is... That does seem weird. It's a little weird. Yeah. So I was thinking, I was like, why not just make right arm, right trigger, left arm, yeah. left trigger. So I, so I got to go in and customize it um, to make it a little bit easier for me to control. It's pretty cool. I will say the opening like cinematic, you know, the thing that plays before the main menu... It's like four minutes long and I was like enraptured from the start because it's like it starts out as like Top Gun, like carrier stuff where they're not in terms of music, but where it's just like close up shots of like mm -hmm. them, like prepping the craft and stuff. Mechanical and it starts fetishism. To, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To the max. But it's like it's like modern U.S. military meets like mechs. Um, Evangelion. And yeah, yeah. But like but not as much organic, like mm -hmm. very much like Northrop Grumman tech, yeah. you know. And then it zooms out and you're like, what the fuck is that? And it's an arms fort, I think is what they're called, which is basically just like a – like imagine an aircraft carrier, right? But imagine like 12 of them together in a single giant structure that is either like walking or rolling across a giant desolate wasteland. And you're just like, yes. And then they're like catapult launching these, these mechs and you're just like, yes. And then it's, it's, it's incredible. It's so good and you're watching it and, you, and then and then the game starts and pretty quickly they start inundating you with the lore of the world and it turns out the lore of the world is just like, hey, we made a dozen different like near future military industrial complex companies and you kind of have to pick loyalty to one group of them or the other and I'm like, I love it. Oh, oh God, I'm in. Like logos, like the loading screen is like loading, it's like the logo for the company and this company got started working for this corporation before taking over the land of Africa. I and love it. I, I know, I was like, I was like, oh my God. So I'm, I'm playing it. I think literally my only complaint so far is the controls so I just need to hop back on and, and switch the controls around because it seems pretty cool so far. The missions are just like, I've only done a couple but it's like, Hop in here, destroy these, um, and it seems pretty cool so far. Um, big problem I have, though, uh -oh. with the PlayStation 3. I forgot how dog shit the DualShock 3 is as a controller. Like, it's it's got the stubby wings on it and the little tiny triggers. So it's just like holding it is you literally have to hold it like this. Like, you have to, like, cramp your hands into a weird claw shape to hold it. It sucks so bad. Like I'm, I'm, I, I'm so happy they finally pulled their heads out of their asses and were like, let's just copy Xbox because they have a much better controller. Um, it sucks holding it. But anyways, that's that's kind of what I've been playing. Uh, let's should we go to the news? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm surprised uh, you're doing doing all right. To remind that sounds remind Ian good. about breaking news. Well, yeah, first let's we do it play at the, the end. news theme. Okay. Here's the news, it's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? I remembered Chris's last name. But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you, though. Unlike Factorio, Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. I just want to say, Zach, that is a great song. You did a great job singing it. But you're also beautiful. Are we going to have a little mini concert at Extra Life? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. You should you should come on. You should come on. Dad. I'll mute you again. Yeah, I'll mute you. <laughs> You'll mute me? Yeah, remember when Jake tried to sing his rendition? I just. Oh, you weren't on that episode. I was hosting local chat. We started playing it. Jake brought out his like ukulele or whatever, and I just immediately muted him. <laughs> uh -huh. I have a ukulele. I could get it. I will mute you. Ian, do you know what? I just, sorry, I just looked over here, and this won't play for the audio listeners, but I have printed this out in preparation for 
Uh, Pokemon White. You. And I, I printed it out and then I put tape on it. So it would be Did you good. get bingo? <laughs> yeah, I got bingo. Uh, for I those- did um, <laughs> that Pokemon White game guide that we bought together in Philly. Yeah. Fantastic. It came it came in came in it was very helpful. Came in clutch. Came in clutch. Clutched me, baby. Clutch me, I baby. miss old game guides. Like you buy like a thick a hundred page enormous yeah. book with the sketches and maps. Man, and tips. I I wanted to buy one so uh. badly for Elden Ring, but they I think they just came out with it. Yeah, they like just I was literally out. I was literally like the day after Elder Ring came out, I was like, I know I'm going to play this game. I, I need some guidance here. And I was literally like, Prima, get, somebody give me something. I'm going to pay you for a guide. And the only one they had was one that we're not allowed to talk and about. And the Pokemon guides were always so good. Like I didn't have a Game Boy growing up, but like I would go to like the, the bookstore and flip through the Pokemon guides because they were just so yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, the, you guys ever hear Ocean State Job Lot? You ever have that new guys? Yeah. They were like a, a re- I don't know what are they a re- they buy overstock items and then resell them. Is this is that like a is? like a disgusting jersey company. No, I know what you're talking no, about. No, no, they this is like back in Massachusetts. They, yeah, they they like flip stuff. Anyways, um they used to sell I guess Borders or Barnes and Noble used to offload game guides to them because they would have yeah. tons of game guides for like a dollar. And so I just used to buy, like, they weren't always the most popular games, but I would just buy them up because they're a dollar and they're fun to look through. Um, when I was playing Ocarina of Time, I was trying to find, uh, I was checking on eBay. I was like, oh, what's an Ocarina of Time game guide? And of course, it's over $100. So mm. the fine folks at archive.org have incredible PDFs that I just look through instead. We love to see it. Um, anyways, moving to the news, folks. Uh, news. Top of the report here square enix had their enix. conference call this uh past week uh and we've got a little old uh tweet chain here from ian's uncle uh just going through uh, oh look at his handle his name is david gibson but his handle is gibbo game oh uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. good uh you want to take us through this ian yeah uh so again this is from the results conference call from square enix so this is straight from the mouth of square enix theoretically to their shareholders uh so just be aware of that's their audience um basically the crystal dynamics ito sale was driven by quote concerns that the titles cannibalize sales of the rest of the group and so it could improve capital efficiency and quote that quote is from david gibson not necessarily from squeenix but basically they're saying hey the uh crystal dynamics and ito's games did so poorly that we lost money on that and that brought down the sales and revenue of the entire organization. Uh, that was just f- selling off uh, Crystal Dynamics and Eidos was phase one. Phase two is basically bringing in uh, venture capital or other equity groups or joint ventures to have part or total ownership of some of their studios. The idea being if you own 100% of the studio, then you're 100%. Well, you're not 100% at risk, but you own 100% of the risk of any titles they make. If you split ownership with somebody else, let's say Epic, Tencent, or whatever, then they assume part of the risk as well, and it makes some of these studios less risky. Um, So the idea is basically Square Enix has literally said they are looking to sell stakes in their studios, and at the same time, this kind of buys into the rumor that, you know, maybe Squeenix is trying to prep themselves for a larger acquisition by somebody like sony or possibly even xbox um this just seems like squeenix basically saying hey uh yes we deliberately shit on the western studios because they deserve to be shat upon and also yes please daddy big bucks buy us uh what what do you guys think which of these studios can we buy? How can we? That's pull? what I was. Can thinking. we do a crowdfunding wasn't, initiative? Wasn't it three hundred million? It was dirt cheap that they sold them for. It's crazy. So what's if they what what of their assets do you think we could reasonably buy? Oh, I that's that's a good question for next time. <laughs> hey, what if we get in? Because I want to look at it. You should look that up. I want to get in on some Dragon Quest action so if i could get like yeah, a one percent stake up. in that studio that'd be okay. great uh we'll move <coughs> while you're looking that up we'll move on to the next uh oh man you move this stuff all around on me just top to bottom it's priority wise i know what it is but i read them all before stream and then you rearrange Talk about them. unity's raytheon dlc um unity signs a multi-million dollar contract to help u.s government with defense 
Uh, it says here they are already designing missiles to send. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Unity has signed a lucrative contract uh, with the firm. Now, <laughs> khakis? Or is it C A C I? I can't find my khaki. Probably, probably C A C I. That sounds like a military acronym. Yes, it does. Um, C A C I is a six billion dollar company that works with the U.S. government on various defense initiatives. Uh, in 2022 alone, C A Cacti has secured millions of dollars in order to assist the U.S. Army in areas with aerial intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Um, I'm assuming it's that Unity is going to be used to make like combat sims and yeah. like training yeah. stuff. Um, because I know I I, re I suddenly was flashing back into my head of a of a field trip I took sometime in middle school to go to a place where the army would train people to drive tanks, and it was like a bunch <laughs> of tank simulators that looked like they it was built in like like I don't know like id tech one. Or early source <laughs> engine, um, very boxy and not very detailed. But uh, this was what popped up. Like I wasn't expecting, you know, like missiles that said "Made by Unity" on the side of them. Well, there was um, um, there were a couple of those training games Ian and I were trying to get a hold of, but you literally need to send like uh, yeah. ID to get copies mm. of them. Uh, there is a quote here at the end. Uh, quote. Uh, or actually, this is from the financial report. Uh, Unity's latest financial report. Unity uh, was awarded an exciting three-year multi-million dollar contract to advance the development of smart human machine interfaces by CACI International. The win in the single largest digital twin solutions deal for Un Unity to date and oh this win is the single largest digital twin solutions deal for the Unity to date and is a strategic deal that helps us solidify Unity as the preferred real-time 3d platform for future systems design and simulation programs across the u.s government we're getting rid of those floppy disk computers with running those nuclear warheads and they're going to run on unity so let me let me say why i put this in the list and so high is i i think we should have a discussion on this i'm not sure mm. where i stand unity is is getting crapped on for this by the game development community um, in general, they they don't really appreciate military industrial content, uh, military industrial complex, and for valid reasons, um, especially with the negative press Unity has garnered lately through all their various, you know, crypto ventures, weird layoffs, oh, etc., things that. like that. Um, but I want to hear your guys' take on what you think about game companies or game tech being tied to U.S. government or other military contracts. So, for example, we talked about Bohemia Interactive, who makes the Arma series. They've had a longstanding relationship with making essentially uh, a military sim version of, of the Arma engine. Um, you have Microsoft, who just signed a giant deal uh, to provide HoloLens to the U.S. military as part of their like next-gen night vision and uh, coordinated combined arms tech effort. You have uh, Palmer Lucky, who after he left uh, Facebook Oculus, went, has essentially started a tech-focused military industrial complex defense initiative. Um, how do you guys feel about game tech and game hardware being used by the military? Uh, I think, no, I, sorry. I thought Jake, I got fucking good questions tonight. No, no, that wasn't, that was me pausing. Cause I thought Jake was about to talk and then he wasn't. And so I started talking. So I'm talking. Um, I, I think it, it, it's a thing you got to wait and see. Like, I don't have any qualms. Like, I, I feel like taking Bohemia interactive. That's a relationship that's been going on for a while. And I mm -hmm. like, I don't think anything negative has come out of that as far as, mainstream media is reported on or the video games uh fans are up up in arms about or upset about so i feel like these are a lot of companies realizing hey how do we get a slice of that military money because it's that just going up defense just budget. going up um yeah so here's how we can do that let's sell them shitty hollow lenses or let's give them our engine uh it's when they're like i feel like there's a line of them getting more involved with that stuff that can can uh, change things but personally i have no issues with it i feel like um but mostly because i'm ignorant of the entire thing like if someone gave yeah. me some information about it or like hey you should think this way because of x you should not think this way because of x i feel like i'd have a firmer opinion on that 
Uh, yeah, it's I, I think for me, it's it's uh, I don't really appreciate people treating it like a black and white issue, because, for example, there are plenty of great things that come out of initial military development like GPS. That was initially a military initiative from the from the U.S. military and, and other NATO countries. And now we have it as, as an incredible civilian enhancement today. Um, there's also, like you said, Bohemia, there's other companies where it kind of falls in line for them to uh to basically take the tech that's already existing and provide it to the military in a slightly altered form but then on the other hand there are definitely companies that uh are doing questionable things with it so for example um like i mentioned palmer lucky he's part of the tech he's developing is literally like technology that you hook up to cameras to specifically spot uh immigrants coming across a border like from from several kilometers away and it's like you you know your tech you're literally designing your tech for a morally questionable purpose it's not like you are designing you're not designing an accounting software that happens to be used by the military you are basically like giving them a way to break the moral spirit of 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 individuals um so i i do think there's a gray area there and i think it comes back to i think about rocket league and Rocket League was funded and built because the studio that built it was taking contracts for other companies. You know, they were taking, hey, we're going to help you with your multiplayer. We're going to help you push this game over their line. They they ate and they fed their company and they built Rocket League off of the money doing projects for other companies. So they had to put their dream aside, get the money they needed to finish their own dream. And I feel like for some of these companies like unity included, you know, like they got to make these deals to get the money to be able to do what they really want to do. And I think as long as you're not directly involved in something that is morally questionable, as long as you're doing something relatively benign, like even the, the HoloLens, where you're just like, Hey, look, we're building a fucking cool night vision goggle. Like, have you guys seen it? It's basically like, instead of it just being a night vision goggle, it's a hollow lens, but it detects like it detects people and outlines them and it's constantly like, like if it Whoa. sees a friendly tank, it'll, it'll put like an FFF tag on it and be like, this is so-and-so from this company. Like it's, it's literally like, like that's AR cool. military God, like that's awesome tech. And I don't think that's morally questionable because it's, it's, it's just a military use for augmented reality. So I think as long as I think it's okay, as long as you're making sure that your tech is not leading to some questionable things. Yeah. Yeah, it's there's the the ethical considerations being one thing and I think that's by and large m- most of the reaction that I've seen to it. I mean, the game dev reactions to the stuff Unity was doing before this just being anti-consumer in a different fashion that I know a lot of devs who are building games in Unity or have built games in Unity then being like, "Okay, I'm probably not going to build my game in Unity cuz I don't want to, you know, yeah. feed this beast." Um and then this kind of being just a, a different offshoot of that of people game developers and then cons- consumers of the m- product being like well i don't really want to give my money to the military industrial complex by proxy um yeah. uh so it yeah i mean that is that is how the market worketh exactly yeah the same but, yeah i would be i i would feel weird as a as a unity employee if like what do you do if if you suddenly they're like hey we're we've got this contract with the De- department of defense and you're like well i don't really like that that's why i don't yeah. work at lockheed or raytheon or- we need you to tell the difference between these two pictures is it a school or is it some sort of encampment we need yeah to- <laughs> excuse me yeah <laughs> yeah because, yeah, if you're just building, like, a training center, like, Doom was used by the U.S. military. There was a Doom wad for yeah. for army training. Um, Rip and tear one. But, yeah, you, you start getting into weird territory if, like, I don't know if they're doing any sort of, like, AI stuff or whatnot. Because um, that's the stuff that's the most prone to bias where, yeah, like Will said, you're like, is it a school or is it... How does it decide? It doesn't decide. It just bombs both. <laughs> <laughs> Acceptable losses, Jake. Uh, S- moving S- on. School is just future terrorists. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no. oh, man. I wish I could mute you. Um, <laughs> and a, and a, a wedding is just happy down. terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hi. Hey, the U.S. has never been wrong. Okay. That's you may true. look like we're wrong, but all our drone strikes are 100% legitimate. 
<laughs> never has anything bad happened in United States history because of the United States. Yeah, I don't never. care if there were U.S. citizens in there. <laughs> They're terrorists as far as I'm What concerned. are they doing there? That was Obama that did that. Just to <laughs> just add one last job there. That was Obama. Every Obama. United States president yes. is a war criminal. Uh, speaking of war criminals, Pac-Man back on the movie <laughs> circuit here. Live action Pac-Man movie in the works from Wayfair Bandai Namco. Um, speaking of war crimes. <laughs> speaking of what if, war crimes. I like I I think waka we waka. know what this movie what this movie is going to be, which is that this the some of the people tied with the Sonic movie are tied with this movie, so it's going to be the Sonic movie, which is live action Pac Man, and he's like, "Look at me, I'm weird," and then it's just going to be like, <laughs> I don't know, like James, let's Give say James Marston. It's James Marston all over again, being like, "Well, this is so weird. How can I help you, new best friend?" But Pac Man is weirdly furry, and yeah, his eyes are wrong. Yeah, it's and then they're going to have to redo it and delay it. It's going to be terrible, but make him smoother and rounder. I, I got a kind of a two part question. You can take either part. Uh -oh. What what do you want this movie to be? I don't and want or it to be. what would be a good version of this movie? Animated for one. Hand drawn, preferably. Okay, I'm sorry. I gotta take that off the table. That's the easy answer. It's it has to be a live action Pac-Man movie. Does no. Pac-Man have to be live action? No, he doesn't. He, he can be if you want to. So then I he doesn't would, have to. I would prefer it being like a Tron premise where a person goes into the computer rather than Pac-Man coming out of the machine. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I was trying to think of some like gritty future world where like there's hackers and it's cyberpunk <laughs> and it's it's, yes! it's William William Gibson. It's Metal, right? Metal Gear Solid, Child. but it's Pac-Man. Yeah, but like Pac-Man is just like the 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 cart or the board they have just happened to be a pac-man board that they put all the stuff on so it's just pac-man yes. and there's like some sort of segment with actual pac-man because they have to load it or something but that's just like the feel-good thing is like this pac-man board yeah and that's why the name of the movie is pac-man and then obviously I, I like i feel like from there you just extrapolate out like there's the three or four like uh ghosts uh no like bounty hunters that work for the government but they're the ghosts like blimpy and limpy and biscuity whatever the names are <laughs> one of Bl them is clyde Blinky, clyde maurice Biscuit. adolf <laughs> that's uh, it you got it Those, that that's it, right? that that's the four it's a ph adolf okay <laughs> yeah calm down yeah stalin yeah so is it gonna uh, be the ghost like pac-man gets out of the machine and the ghosts get out of the machine to try to get Pac-Man back into the machine or do the ghosts get out of the machine first and Pac-Man then has to get out of the okay, machine so to get that's the ghost. Not bad. That's Jake's not getting bad. into the territory of what, so we were saying what we want it to be and so now Jake's getting into the territory of what is it going to be? What is it actually no, going to be? be? I don't a shitty movie where they come out of the right. cart. I don't think, <laughs> Dean I don't think we need to talk about that. write this movie. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think we need to talk about what it's going to be because we already are seeing the Roland exact same Emmerich's movie in our head. Pac Man. Yeah. Pac Man but I do think, eats the Washington Monument. <laughs> walk for walk me, walk. if if I had this movie, I would take my balls and I would put them on the table, and this would be a hard R movie about addiction. It would just be about no. Pac Man being addicted to these drugs. It would be Requiem for a Dream meets Pac Man. Cheapers. Um, I, no. I was gonna say this isn't the. F I mean, Pac Man was in a previous live action film. He was in was he? that gamers nah, movie Pixels? with Adam Sand Pixels. That's what it was. Pixels. Uh, he Honestly, he's not as a terrible. Not Pixels was not terrible for being based on a YouTube short. Yeah, and for being an Adam Sandler movie, not terrible. And Kevin James. Actually, yeah, I think you're oh, right. Man, and. Not to Peter Dinklage and no. someone else. Uh, and it was like Kevin was Hart, not Carrie Mulligan. Was it wasn't? Anyways, one of the, one of them. I was just gonna one say. I speaking of Kevin James over the weekend. I watched the hit film Monster House, and uh, I still think it holds up. Pretty good movie. I don't know. Anime. How what did that. they say with the budget of this? Uh, it says, movie is gonna be because I'm assuming it's two, gonna be like a hundred million dollars, five million dollar investment from no. Sarah Witts. Dear. But the problem is that's just a normal movie nowadays. Yeah, but that's oh, what's wait, so sorry. frustrating I, to me. I think that's wrong. This movie is not going to make its money back. There's yeah, no way. It, what's the market? 
Jake, Sonic 3 just got announced. It does not have, Pac-Man does not have the kind of memeable mass market appeal that Sonic the Hedgehog have the has. Because Sonic has a lot of kids right now because it's had several shows and it's got this the comic is not, running. This is a movie of the same mm-hmm. era for the people that made Top Gun Maverick the seventh highest grossing movie of all time. And it's yes. not going to be that. I know it needs it needs. They, I, honestly, I think the middle road, which is what they could actually do, but is not bonkers like we're suggesting, which is this should be like a Lonely Island Boys movie or or like a Seth Rogen movie, like a PG Seth Rogen movie or something. Somebody that can actually make it funny, but appropriate. And that's probably the best they can they can hope for. With this. And then it's always frustrating because you could be like, well, you can then also make five $25 million movies that you give yes. to a number of directors or yes. 10 even smaller budget. That's movies. not the movie industry nowadays. We both. I that. know it's frustrating. It's Marvel's is, fault. It is. Honestly, I blame Kevin look, look at I need all you fuckers listening to this podcast to come onto the YouTube and watch the replay and look me in the eyes. You did this. <laughs> When you fuckers chow down on those mediocre ass Marvel movies, one after a dozen after 20 plus, this is your fault. And when you said the Star Wars sequels were good, this is your fault. This is the fucking world you're living in now that you chowed down on that shit and said, feed me more. One of this is your fault. I'm being dead serious. This is your fault. So live it in is it. the market's you, fault. You guys, it's the audience's yeah. fault. Yeah. And we have it's to live with it. These fault. are the what what hath we wrought? With our dollars. No, I think everyone should be able to enjoy what they like. And if that's a mediocre Marvel movie, then you go enjoy it. You know what? Fuck if you. It's you're, not you're part of the problem. Andre you're Tarkovsky's why we have Funko Pops. Stalker. Oh, excuse yes, that's, that's me. Funko if Pops are If it's not Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla Stalker. is a bad movie. It's incredible. No. I'll say this. Shin Godzilla and, and Starship Troopers. I know I bring them up a lot, but they are great. They are great examples of we're going to take what is normally a schlocky, stupid action movie premise and we're going to highbrow the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. And and that's how you do it because it's Starship still schlocky Troopers enough. It's not even that highbrow. It's just yeah, way exactly. better than it has any right to be. <laughs> Yeah, but it's still schlocky enough that that stupid people oh, yeah. can go to it and be like, "I love this movie." That's Would how you, you do like it. You don't have hair? you don't have to strip it down to bare basic minimum and break a whole bunch of VFX people just to get the same fucking movie out three times a year. Oh, I'm mad. I'm sorry. I was going to be nice this podcast. I know this is what gets off. me fired up too. <laughs> movie news. Do you guys want to uh, quick hit a couple of these and then we can go to my fun game? Yeah, sure. I'll quick hit a couple of these. Uh, Ian already mentioned it, but Sonic 3 is announced for December 20th, 2024. <clears throat> I'm going to go head to head with Avatar 3. Avatar 2. Electric Blue. No. no. 2 three. is this December. 3 no, is No, Avatar December. 2, because it's going to get delayed again. <laughs> <laughs> it's already it's been never what, coming out. 10 no. years? 11 years? Um, oh. 2009, I think Avatar was, right? Why am I excited for that movie? I, I hate Avatar. <laughs> I trust Jake. It was like crazy about him either. He's got a yeah. Jake's leaving. He's us breaking again. up. He's breaking up. He's too excited. He's so mad. Sorry. He's Jim Cameron. More hits than misses. I trust yes. him. Yes. Yes. I agree. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, I I feel like we're obligated to mention Arc Raiders is delayed to 2023. Uh, because I believe Celia still works for them, right? Am I crazy? I think so. And and Who? I, Arc Arc Raiders and Marvel's Midnight Sun both delayed both on top delayed. of some other delays One of that those have already games been looks announced. Good. Honestly, Arc Raiders looks looks pretty interesting. I don't know if you've seen stuff from her recently. That's it looks, the game it looks I'm good. talking about. Arc Raiders looks oh, really okay. great. <laughs> okay, I thought you were going the other way. But the no. point is like. Tw- 2022 is rapidly deflating in terms of games wise, especially AAA uh-huh. games. We still have some coming, but there's a lot of stuff getting delayed. So this Just, is going to be a weird year. Is God of War the only big AAA release left? Saints Row. Okay. Breath of the Wild 2. No, that got delayed. I know, <laughs> I know it did. I feel like I, I I just populated my calendar with some video game releases recently, and I feel like there's at least one or two more on top of that. Splatoon 3. Mm, triple a it is i know uh um yeah, the, the only so last thing i wanted to hit crazier. on uh was the that call of duty plagiarism dlc thing was wild 
They released four new skins. It and was one that of them skin, was the like that wolf skin. Yeah. Yeah. Sep, how do you and I, I, dog? I follow or I followed so somebody who the like the, I saw the artist retweet it before it became news of being like, yeah. uh, this is mine. Yeah, Very it's like visibly. exactly it. It's crazy. I don't know how on earth that happens. Like it's some artist at the studio who's like on a deadline and it's like, I can't, I can't, uh, that no one will I, know because I don't know uh, how yeah. it happens. But that's, that's the thing is that I know exactly how it happens. It just takes one person making a bad decision. And because there's so much of that stuff online now and it's pretty easy to just rip it off, it's, it's very easy for the studio to miss it. So it's and you it's, just hope no one notices. Yeah, exactly. Which is they a stupid notice. thing. Um, yeah, I just think it's wild. It's it, not a lot of that stuff makes it through that often anymore. Uh, Ian Gibson, what is your rem- reminder thing? Uh, well, folks, let me take you back to May 2nd, 2011 in Abbottabad, Pakistan. When the Navy SEALs raided Osama bin Laden's compound... <laughs> They found anime and they found some video games, including Half-Life, Super Mario Brothers, Yoshi's Island DS, games, Final Fantasy games. 7, etc. Fast forward to just this past week when the Department of Justice ra- raided Mar-a-Lago, President Trump's one of his many personal residences. <laughs> and I am reading now that the Department of Justice is moving to moving forward with, quote, unsealing the search warrant and itemized receipt of what was taken from yes, former I President Donald this. Trump's residence. I, I want to know Garland to talk about it. what what video game and or anime and or nerd ass shit do you think is going to show up on that oh, list? Oh, my goodness. Well, so that's the question is when in, in Attorney General Garland's press conference, he was talking about the narrow scope of. Yes. Oh, the Jake's mainstream died. media is trying to silence Jake. <laughs> the fake news. I don't know if they're going to stumble upon Trump's <laughs> Chainsaw Man collection. <laughs> or I, I'm assuming they probably took computers, right? I'm assuming they should have sure taken computers. Did. So uh, they're going to find some porn. Yeah. They're not going to say what it was, but they. I'm not even sure they'll say porn He's in this, in but porn. eventually they may say porn. Images. Yeah. What VHSs do you think he keeps with him <laughs> at all times? Um, like what's his favorite movie? And he's going to ruin it for me. Uh, what's that's the name a, of that clown? That's a good question. Bozo? What's the name of the, the, yeah, Bozo the Clown? Or it's it? just a bunch of Bozo. What's, what's a just movie? A bunch of the Bozo, Red where, Skelton? favorite movie is probably The Godfather or something. Yeah, it's I'm trying to think of a movie where he identifies with the wrong person. Home Alone 2? <laughs> because he's, he's in it. it. <laughs> yeah. Home Alone 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think Baron is playing? I mean, he's definitely playing Fortnite and Among Us. Maybe, maybe I would. I mean, how old's Baron? Well, first of all, he's like eighteen isn't feet he, tall. Isn't he like fifteen or sixteen now? Yeah, he's like a thousand feet, feet older tall. now. <laughs> he's uh, like seven foot. It's crazy, it's wild. <laughs> um, I don't know. He's probably yeah, probably Fortnite. He probably has every it's one of the Call whale? of Duties, surely. Yeah. Oh, he's got to be a so. whale. I bet, but I bet when when the son of the president or a former president buys a game console. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They take it away from bonus him. security yeah, it to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm wondering. <laughs> sorry, Jake. You keep pausing at the greatest times. Um, sorry. Uh, I think, um, like, in my heart of hearts, I hope that he's just like sitting there, like playing like stardew valley and like yes Papers, what if he's playing rim world and rim world and like Obra din oh, what if he islanders he's, he's got 700 right hours in islanders yes he's playing the most like neoliberal games like um what's the what's the one about the communist cop and it's all text-based disco elysium uh, he's playing disco elysium <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> metal wolf chaos <laughs> metal gear uh yeah man that'd be so he just that'd he just incredible. walks up to Dad, do you think love could bloom even on a battlefield? There was a story, I think, from this. <laughs> what? I'm glad. I'm glad Jake froze because that gives me time to make fun of your Trump impression, which was I, just. I was literally about to say I can't do a Trump impression, but Jake started talking. 
I don't know how to do a Trump impression. I was never good at it. I had four years. Am I back? You're Am back. I here? I think you're here. Okay. I think you're back. There was a, a story from this week or last week of a of a teenager that turned in like their dad was it <laughs> to the FBI, and his interview was like over recording or whatever, and he's got two Metal Gear posters on the wall. Oh yeah, yes. like, of course he would oh. turn in his J six dad. That's yes. so good. <laughs> yeah, I I can't wait to see this list just because the op- the the Osama list. I'll just say the reason why they know it was anime was because one of the files it looks like gibberish and it just has random. It says msoms dash anime and then like five three four dot mp four and somebody was like, wait a minute, that that's the file like file name structure that this like Middle Eastern anime forum uses, and they like use that file name to look up the exact anime, and it was some like boy detective anime that he was watching. Oh, I love so it. Good. I want these details. I want the juicy details of what they found, not because I give a shit about the politics, <laughs> well, I probably should, <laughs> but, but because I just want to laugh. I just want to laugh. It's free time. I can't wait it's for every- the reveal. <laughs> He's got a hard drive full of every Joe Rogan episode. Oh, <laughs> undoubtedly. Uh, uh, I think that's going to do it for us this week, folks. I'm going to hit the outro music and we're going to get the heck outro here. Do you, think, hear do you think he's a subpixel fan? Uh, well, I was making, tra- I don't know if I cut out or not, but I was joking that maybe Baron is watching the stream. <gasps> oh, Baron, what's up, my man? We you do- know, we do say we do say January 6th a lot, so we probably got on his algorithm. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Some secret service officer has watched at least one of these streams. <laughs> <laughs> um, folks, you can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our link tree where you can get all of our hot, hot content. Finally, it'll happen Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, the grand finale of uh, the Sunday service stream series. I have gotten the, my email of my order from christianbook.com. It arrived just in time. I'm so excited. Uh, Ian, what are you giggling at? Uh, just memes on Twitter. Lots of good stuff in here. Lots of good stuff on Twitter, episode. folks. Can we just let's wrap uh, it up? We, uh, Jake, thank you for being here. Thank you for freezing in the most greatest way possible. Uh, we hope you're happy, healthy. I can't wait for your Dead Space thing. Uh, it's going to be great. You're beautiful. Uh, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, and this song's not going to end properly for you, but it's going to end properly for me. And we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.